The 12 days of MLB rankings officially ends today with an absolute bang. The top 50 players in Major League Baseball. That's right, we're ranking both hitters and pitchers going into the 2022 season. It's absolutely crazy. I mean, the talent level in Major League Baseball right now is some of the highest that we've ever seen. We are truly in a golden age of baseball. There could be 75 to 80 players that have a case to be in the top 50 right now. A lot of cuts had to be made, but if not, I mean, this video would literally go on forever. So before I do get going into the rankings, I want to make sure I thank you guys so much for the amazing amazing support that you've shown on all the rankings during the 12 days of MLB rankings, as well as the amazing support that you show on today's video. A ton of work, a ton of effort, a ton of research goes into these videos, goes into my rankings. Whether you agree with every single one or not, I'm not really concerned about that. I understand we will have our differences, but I do want to thank you guys for still coming out here and supporting everything that I do. Allowing this to be my job, I got the best job in the world outside of being an actual professional Major League Baseball player. And that's because of you guys allowing me to do stuff like this, supporting me like you do. I also wouldn't be able to do the 12 days of rankings without a massive amount of help from my editor, Jackson. Jackson, put your Twitter up here. Make sure you guys follow him. Absolute legend. Major, major reason why I'm able to get this stuff done. I know I ask for likes on every single video, but particularly in this one, it does mean a lot because there is so much time and effort that goes into it. And it is the end of the 12 days of MLB rankings. Drop a like if you do enjoy it. It really does help support the video as well as the channel. If I haven't earned your subscription yet, I don't know how, but I'm gonna still ask you, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet done so. I hope I've shown you enough to wanna stick around. Get in the comment section down below. I know you're going to disagree with me, so tell me. What do you think of my top 50 player rankings? Let me know in the comment section. And last but not least, if you have not yet followed me on all my social media, at GiraffeNeckMark everywhere, links is always in the description. All right, everybody, here we go. The top 50 player rankings start right now. All right, here we go. Getting the top 50 started at the number 50 spot, DH of the Houston Astros, Jordan Alvarez. It's really hard to rank DHs in the top 50 because, of course, they only make an impact on the offensive side of the baseball, but Jordan Alvarez is that good. You're looking at a dude who's going to hit around 280 with a 350, 360, on base percentage, 530 slugging, a WRC plus in the 140 range. Just one of the most elite hitters in the game. At such a young age, his patience, his plate discipline, and the pop is among the top of the league. Jordan Alvarez getting a start at number 50. Next up at the number 49 spot, Blue Jay fans, you happy? Even though he's not a top 10 shortstop, he's still a top 50 player. That's Bo Bichette. Bo Bichette really is good on the offensive side of the baseball. He's one of the stronger shortstops in the league. Since coming into the league in 2019, he's hit 300 with a 345 on base, 500 slugging slugging percentage and a WRC plus at 126. While there is some improvement needed with the glove on the defensive side at the plate, Bo Bichette is one of the best hitting shortstops in the league. Definitely top 50. Just slightly ahead of Bo Bichette coming in at number 48, New York Mets shortstop Francisco Lindor. While Lindor did have a down year in 20 and 21, we have seen this guy be able to perform as one of the top shortstops in the league before, and we got a little glimpse of it at times with the Mets last season. Plus defensively, he's absolutely elite. One of the best defensive shortstops in the league. The last two seasons, he's had WRC plus at 104, which is not very great. But we saw his walk rate jump up to a career high of 11.1% last year. The strikeouts are still down below 20%. And he was starting to hit for some pop towards the end of the year. Plus, the projections like Lindor to bounce back next year. And if he does with that defense, you're easily looking at a top 50 player, no doubt. And then one spot ahead of Francisco Lindor at the number 47 spot, a shortstop again, Tim Anderson of the Chicago White Sox. This group of shortstops, they're all right around each other. Tim Anderson, a very good offensive shortstop for the last few years, but he took a huge step forward on the defensive side last year and really improved his game there where he's kind of been below average in the past. Since 2019, Tim Anderson's hitting 322 with a 349 on base, 495 slugging, and a WRC plus at 127. He definitely doesn't walk and that would be the next big step he can make in his game along with still improving on the defensive side. But at the plate, he's got some elite bat to ball skills at shortstop and he steals bags. I got Anderson at 47. The final of this chunk of shortstops coming in at number 46, current free agent Trevor Story. Trevor Story just even a few years ago was one of the top shortstops in the league and I still believe he is despite having a down year in Colorado last year. In a down season, he was about league average at the plate, WRC plus at 100, hitting 250 with a 329 on base, 471 slugging, 24 homers, 20 stolen bases, 75 RBIs. But we've seen him play great defense in the past. He's great on the base paths and he has great power. I think we'll see Trevor Story bounce back to be one of those top shortstops again. 46. Coming in at the number 45 spot, I've got Brandon Nimmo of the New York Mets. And I know what you're saying. Here's the Mets bias, but guys, Brandon Nimmo offensively has been one of the better players that you just don't know about. You're sleeping on. He's an on-base kid. King. Since 2018, he basically has a 400 on base percentage with a WRC plus at 139. Not to mention his defense improved massively in center field last year. And moving to a corner, you'd expect it to be even better because those aren't high defensive positions. The biggest knock that I will give Nimmo is that he has not played a full season since 2018. Injuries are definitely a concern. But when he's on the field and when he's healthy, the dude makes a massive impact with the bat, an elite leadoff hitter. At the number 44 spot, we have the first appearance from a catcher, and that's going to be JT Raul Muto of the Philadelphia Phillies. 
abilities. Real Muto is still one of the top catchers in the game. Athleticism wise, he's absolutely elite. And while he was a little bit down at the plate last year, he's still really good. In 134 games, 17 homers, 73 RBIs. He even stole 13 bases, which is so weird from a catcher. 263 average, 343 on base, 439 slugging, WRC plus at 108. He was a four and a half win player last year, walking just shy of 9%, doesn't strike out too much. Real Muto is still a very good player and defensively, of course, very solid as well. For the 43rd best player in Major League Baseball, I kind of hate this ranking, but it's where he slots in right now. It's going to be Anthony Rendon. Now, it might be harsh because prior to this past season, Anthony Rendon has been so sick, but last year was like the first year he looked old. He's still doing some incredible things and I expect him to go right back up this list, but I do have to take into account a little bit of 2021 and take some things with a grain of salt. Rendon last year only played in 58 games, 240 average, 329 on base, 382 slugging, 95 WRC plus. Was concerning, but was dealing with injuries. If he stays healthy, I think we'll see a guy who has WRC plus around 130, played pretty good defense at third base. He's shown the ability to be one of those elite hitters. I don't know if he's a six and a half, seven win player like we saw with the Nationals anymore as he's getting older, but Rendon still has the ability to be a top five third baseman in this league, no doubt. And then coming in at number 42, another guy who has the ability to be an MVP type player, but has been down the last couple seasons. That's Alex Bregman. Now, of course, we know he also dealt with injuries in 2021. And while the numbers weren't as good as they'd been in the past, he was still a very solid third baseman. In 2020 and 2021 combined, he played 133 games, 18 homers, 77 RBIs, hitting 261 with a 353 on base, 431 slugging, WRC plus at 117. The defense at third and short kind of have been a little all over the place the last two seasons. He still is walking at a pretty high rate and doesn't strike out at all. Just the power. The power seems to be the thing that's disappeared right now for Bregman. And if he's not going to be a guy who's hitting 30 or 40 homers, it's hard to get him into that elite tier ranking. But still, I expect him to come back from injury and be healthy just outside the top 40 right now. Literally just missing out on the top 40. At number 41, I've got Rafael Devers of the Boston Red Sox. I know I've been clumping positions together, but these guys are all so close that I couldn't separate them. Devers last year took another huge step forward in his game offensively. He was fantastic, walking more than he ever had in his career. 9.3% walk rate, hit 31 homers, 113 RBIs, a 279 average, 352 on base, 538 slugging, and a WRC plus at 132. One of the best offensive third basemen in the league. That being said, with the glove, he's pretty useless, pretty atrocious. So that does kind of hurt him a little bit, but the offensive production from Devers, it's among some of the top in the league. Getting the top 40 started at the number 40 spot, I've got Max Muncy of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Now, Muncy gets dropped down a little bit here because it looks like next year, the injury that he got towards the end of the season could play a little bit into how many games he does play. But that being said, Max Muncy was so good the last few years. Of course, 2020, a little bit of a down year, but in 2021, 144 games, 36 homers, 94 RBIs, hitting 249 with a 368 on base, 527 slugging, and a 140 WRC plus X Woba 406. He was a five win player, walking 14% of the time, striking out 20. Those numbers are fantastic. For the 39th best player in today's video, I've got Brian Reynolds, center fielder of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Big Brian Reynolds fan. What I saw last year was pretty disgusting. I think he can repeat it. In 159 games, 24 homers, 90 RBIs, hitting 302 with a 390 on base, 522 slugging, a WRC plus at 142, plus defensively in the outfield, he was among the best in center field. OAA loved him. His jump was incredible. He was good on the base pass. He walked 11.6% of the time, a career high, and struck out a career low, 18.4%. The projections love him. I love him. Brian Reynolds is a legit stud in center field. For the 38th best player in Major League Baseball, let's talk about the best left fielder in the game, St. Louis Cardinals, Tyler O'Neill. It really was just one season, but even still, I think he's a top 50 player, no doubt, because defensively, he was elite. On the base paths, he's fantastic, has a cannon of an arm, and he hits the ball so freaking hard. Last year, 34 homers, 80 RBIs, 138 games, hitting 286 with a 352 on base, 560 slugging, 145 WRC+. plus. That was awesome. He was a five-win player. I'm interested to see what he does in 2022. Probably regressed just a little bit because that K rate is high with that walk rate, but still, Tyler O'Neill is a really solid player. I mean, O'Neill showed that he could possibly be the entire package last year. That gets him inside the top 40 at number 38. Coming in at number 37, Brandon Crawford of the San Francisco Giants. Now, I don't know how well he's going to be able to repeat the season that we just saw, but I have been doubting Brandon Crawford for the last two years, and he's made me look like a fool. So here you go, Brandon Crawford. You get the respect. Now, don't make me look stupid. Last year in 138 games, 24 homers, 90 RBIs, hitting 298 with a 373 on base, 522 slugging, and a 139 WRC+. Plus, Of course, he was great in the field, and with the Giants getting smarter, his glove got even better because they put him in the right positions. He walked 10.2% of the time last year, striking out only 19%. Those were really solid numbers. And if you take the last two years, combined a 132 WRC+, plus, ever since he made that swing adjustment, he's been a different player. I gotta show him some love. Here we go, the first pitcher sighting in today's ranking, coming in at number 36, Shane Bieber of the Cleveland Guardians. Of course, we know Bieber had that 2020 season where he was the best pitcher in the American League. He was lights out, won the Cy Young, won the Triple Crown. 2021, had some injury issues, kept him off the field a 
little bit. Only pitched in 96 innings. So, you know, what? let's combine the two years together because that gives him about 28 starts, 174 innings, where he had a 2.48 ERA, a FIP at 2.6, an XFIP at 2.52, a K rate shockingly high at 36.5%, walking only 7.7% of batters, and a whip at 1.06. Shane Bieber is one of the best pitchers in the game. I feel like he's like somehow underrated. I don't know. He's just really, really good. I expect a healthy bounce back season in 2022. For the 35th best player in Major League Baseball, Houston Astros second baseman Jose Altuve. Now, I don't think Jose Altuve necessarily has gotten any worse. I just think that there are guys that are going to be passing him by now, which is why I have him at 35. But still, Altuve, after a rough 2020, albeit small sample, kind of went back to what he'd been doing all along. 146 games, 31 homers, 83 RBIs, five stolen bases, hitting 278 with a 350 on base, 489 slugging, 130 WRC plus. Altuve was walking almost 10% of the time, striking out 13%. Like he does stuff extremely well, and he's an absolute beast. I don't know if he's this MVP type player anymore, which is kind of crazy to say because he was still really good. But Altuve definitely deserves respect. I mean, if you're still caught up on the cheating thing, get over it. He's shown that uh, he doesn't need that to be a good player. Definitely my boldest ranking coming in here at number 34. I've got Wander Franco of the Tampa Bay Rays. Now, hear me out. I know you're screaming, you're yelling, you're in the comments typing furiously. He only played 70 games. How are you going to put him at 34? Guys, Wander Franco is a generational talent. I'm just trying to be ahead of the wave here because this dude has a chance to be a top 20 player next year without a doubt. Last year in 70 games, Wander Franco, of course, had that crazy on base streak. It's seven homers, 39 RBIs, 8% walk rate, 12% strikeout rate, 288 average, 347 on base, 463 slugging, and a 127 WRC plus. He was a two and a half win player, projected to be a five win player next year at age 21. Wander Franco, guys, like he's a stud. He's a beast. Am I maybe a little too aggressive on him? For sure. But I'm willing to take that risk because I really do think that this guy is going to be one of the very, very special players we watch in this game. Next up at the number 33 spot, top ranked catcher, Chicago White Sox, Yasmani Grandal. Grandal was a, he was a freak last year. I mean, 93 games. He walked 23% of the time, striking out 21%. That's like still crazy. He had more walks and strikeouts. 23 homers, 62 RBIs, 240 average, 420 on base. Nice. 520 slugging and a 159 WRC plus. In those 93 games at catcher, he was basically a four win player, which is pretty disgusting. And of course, with the glove, Grandal is one of the best. And that value from the catcher position is just, it's crazy. It's awesome. It's so valuable. It's going to be like a four to five win player if he's healthy. I got him right outside the top third. For the 32nd best player in Major League Baseball, we've got another pitcher here, Walker Bueller of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Bueller took a big step forward in his career last year, looked really solid, finished fourth in the Cy Young voting, and for good reason. In 207 innings pitched, he had a 247 ERA, a FIP at 3.16, and an XFIP at 3.57, striking out 26% of the batters he faced, walking 6.4%, a really nice K to walk ratio, and a whip under one at 0.97. Walker Bueller is an absolute beast. He's got the confidence, he's got the ego, and he's ready to beat probably that new ace in Los Angeles for the Dodgers. Just missing on the top 30 at the number 31 spot, Brandon Lau of the Tampa Bay Rays. Talk about a guy who's underrated. Brandon Lau is definitely a part of this list. In case you didn't know, he hit 39 home runs last year. An absolute beast. 99 RBIs. Even stole seven bases. Walks 11% of the time, so he's an on-base machine too. 247 average. 340 on base. 523 slugging. For a WRC plus of 137, he was a five-win player. While with the glove, he might not be the strongest. Uh, it gets outweighed by his bat because his bat's elite at the position. And if you're talking OPS, since 2019, this guy has an 869. Fantastic player at second. Getting the top 30 started at number 30, Chicago White Sox center fielder, Luis Robert. Now, again, I hear you typing for this one, but you're just going to be very wrong about this. As long as Luis Robert plays a healthy season, you're looking at one of the best center fielders in the game. Last year, Luis Robert did something that was so big, and that was cut down the strikeouts, albeit in 68 games. But you combine that with 2020, where we saw him play 56, you kind of get a good idea of the kind of player Luis Robert can be, because you had a little bit of a down 2020 and a high 2021. Put them together, you see 24 home runs in 124 games with 74 RBI, stealing 15 bases, hitting 294 with a 345 on base, 512 slugging, and a WRC plus at 132. And oh yeah, by the way, he's elite in center field. Gets to everything. Luis Robert, top 30 player. One of the guys who uh, you might circle for a sneaky MVP candidate next year. Coming in at the number 29 spot, I've got Paul Goldschmidt of the St. Louis Cardinals. Goldie just keeps on mashing. After his first season with St. Louis in 2019, you maybe got a little worried about him, but he bounced back strong. A great season in 2020, and he was awesome in 2021. 31 homers, 99 RBIs, and stole 12 bases. Hitting 294 with a 365 on base, 514 slugging, WRC plus at 138. He was a five-win player at first. Dude just continues to mash. He's not slowing down anytime soon. Hall of Fame career path. Paul Goldschmidt, 29. Next up at number 28, I've got Milwaukee Brewers pitcher Brandon Woodruff. Woodruff is such a beast. Last year was really the first full season that we saw him pitch, you know, 180 innings, and uh, he really took advantage of it. 30 starts, 2.56 ERA, a FIP at 2.96, an XFIP at 3.05, striking out almost 30% of the batters he faced, walking 6% to give him one of the best K-to-walk ratios in the league. He had a whip
whip under one. Opponents hit under 200 against him. They don't really hit the ball particularly hard. Brandon Woodruff is just so good. Milwaukee, man, they've got pitching for days, and Woodruff is definitely one of those guys at the front line. Coming in at the number 27 spot, newly acquired Texas Ranger, Corey Seager. So you're like some of the guys kind of in this range. One of the knocks you would make is his health. But when he's on the field and he is healthy, I mean, he just absolutely mashes. Let's take 2020 and 2021, combine them together because we can kind of see a full season for Seager. 147 games, 31 homers, 98 RBIs, hitting 306 with a 381 on base, 545 slugging, and 148 WRC+. plus. Now going to Texas, I expect to see the numbers drop a little bit because it's just an absolute hellhole to hit there. And defensively, he's not the strongest, but you're still looking at a guy who's probably going to have like a 130 to 140 WRC plus playing short. Pretty sick stuff. Top five shortstop in the league. Got him at number 27. Next up after Corey Seager, another shortstop, Xander Bogarts of the Boston Red Sox. Now Xander Bogarts, definitely bad fielder. Corey Seager's not great. Bogarts is on another level, but I will say Bogarts consistently goes out and plays about 140 to 150 games a season and rakes every single year. Since 2018, you're looking at WRC plus of 135 for this guy with a 300 average, 371 on base, 523 slugging, and he's like a four to five win player. Last year, still a strong year, 23 homers, 79 RBIs with a 10% walk rate, 18% K rate. If he could improve the defense, Xander Bogarts would be so sick. He just like kind of has no hands. Getting the top 25 started at the number 25 spot, I've got Cattell Marte of the Arizona Diamondbacks. If this guy played for another team in a bigger market, you would all agree with me that this is probably a very fair ranking. But since he doesn't, let me try and prove it to you. 2020, shortened season, small sample size, bad year, throwing it out. 2019, he was an MVP candidate, seven win player, 149 WRC plus, 32 homers, 92 RBIs, and he showed a little bit of that in 2021 as well. Only played in 90 games, but Cattell Marte was an extra base hit machine, 14 homers, 29 doubles, and a triple with 50 RBIs, being 318 with a 377 on base, 532 slugging, 909 OPS, WRC plus at 139. He's going to be playing second base, it looks like, next year. Yeah, Cattell Marte is definitely top 25. He's an MVP caliber player. Matt Olson of the Oakland A's is coming in as the 24th best player in Major League Baseball in today's video. Matt Olson made a huge adjustment last year. He'd always had great pop and had a good glove, but he did something that was huge for his game, and that was massively cut down the strikeouts. A guy for who his career prior to last season had a K rate of 26.1%, dropped it all the way to 16.8%, and he bumped up the walks to 13.1%. He was on another level. 39 homers, 111 RBIs, hitting 271 with a 371 on base, 540 slugging, 911 OPS, good for a WRC plus of 146, plus that elite glove. Matt Olson's a top 25 player, easy. Back to the pitching side of the baseball here at number 23, Zach Wheeler of the Philadelphia Phillies. This one pains me, former Met, but boy, is this guy good. Wheeler finished third in the Cy Young voting, 213 innings, 2.78 ERA, a FIP at 2.59, XFIP 2.84. He was a seven win pitcher last year. He's basically been healthy since 2018. You're looking at about 180 innings a year minimum. The stuff has gone to elite levels. He's turned into one of the best pitchers in baseball. He struck out a career high 29.1% of batters last year while walking 4.4%. These are huge developments for Zach Wheeler and they're going to stick. He's just that good. Back to the offensive side here at number 22, Byron Buxton of the Minnesota Twins. Of course, with him, health is a major concern. So I understand why people would be hesitant to rank him as high as I did. He hasn't played 100 games since 2017. But even in the small samples that he's been playing, especially last year, the dude was disgusting. I mean, in 61 games last year, he was a four-win player. We know on the base paths he can fly, and in the outfield, he's one of the best defensive center fielders, if not the best in baseball. But the bat taking the step forward it has the last two seasons is really what pushing Byron Buxton up this list for me because these numbers are crazy. In 61 games, 19 homers, 23 doubles, 9 stolen bases, hitting 306 with a 358 on base, 647 slugging, and 1,000 OPS. Again, small sample, but even if you take 19 to 21, and that's like an 187 game sample, that's still a WRC plus of 135 with his elite defense and base running, I could honestly see Byron Buxton being inside the top 20 and with a good season next year and playing a full healthy one, a top 10 player in the league. Just missing on the top 20, coming in at number 21, I've got Kyle Tucker of the Houston Astros. Aggressive ranking, but again, Kyle Tucker showed me stuff the last two years that makes me go, oh yeah, this dude's legit. Last year in 140 games, 30 homers, 37 doubles, three triples and 92 RBI, stealing 14 bases, hitting 294 with a 359 on base, 557 slugging to give him an OPS at 917, WRC plus at 140. And similarly, if you want even more sample, 2020 till now, 140 WRC plus. His defense in right field is pretty decent. He's a great athlete, good base runner. He's a complete package just outside the top 20. Getting the top 20 started at number 20, Manny Machado of the San Diego Padres. Manny Machado is a guy who uh, is just really, really good. And he's shown it the last few years. 2021, another strong season. Maybe not as good as the shortened 2020 season, but he was back to being one of the better third basemen in the league for sure. 28 homers, 106 RBIs in 153 games. He also had 31 doubles and two triples, extra base hit machine, stole 12 bases, hitting 
378 with a 347 on base, 489 slugging, and a WRC plus at 122. Of course, has that great glove and arm over at third. He's one of the best guys at the hot corner, top 20. And then just slightly, ever so slightly, one spot ahead of Manny Machado. I'm going to go with Nolan Arenado, who in a down year was still a four win player, was still very good. And of course, with the glove, he's one of the best, if not the best with it. And at the plate, while the WRC plus and like average and stuff was down across the board, we saw something similar with Goldschmidt. I'm really thinking he's going to bounce back next year. And still, Arenado was no slouch. 34 homers, 34 doubles, three triples and 105 RBIs, hitting 255 with a 312 on base, 494 slugging, 807 OPS. Those aren't the MVP, absolute, no doubt, best third baseman in the league type numbers that we saw in the past when he was in Colorado. But in his first season with St. Louis, it's a good start. I really do think we're going to see a Goldschmidt type bounce back for Arenado in 2022. And even still, he was very good. He was a four win player in a down year. Come on, people. He's a beast. Slotting in at the number 18 spot, a guy who really had a fantastic year with perfect timing. Carlos Correa, free agent. Couldn't have picked a better time to have a career season. I mean, defensively, he was one of the best defensive shortstops in the league, won the platinum glove. We know how sick his arm is. And at the plate, he looked really good too. Another knock with Correa in the past had been his health and he played 148 games last year, which is huge because when he's on the field, he's one of the best. Correa last year hit 26 homers, 34 doubles and a triple with 92 RBIs, hitting 279 with a 366 on base, 485 slugging, 850 OPS, good for a WRC plus at 134. Career high in walk rate, career low in K rate. Carlos Correa was doing everything right in 2021. Back to the pitching side here at number 17, newly acquired New York Met, Max Scherzer. Max Scherzer, I can't believe he's still this good. Like, he's dominant. Scherzer finished second in the Cy Young voting. He had an unbelievable year at 36 between the Washington Nationals and Dodgers, and he's not slowing down anytime soon. Last year, in 179 innings pitched, 2.46 ERA, a FIP at 2.97, a whip at 0.86, which was the best in the league. He struck out 34% of the batters he faced, walking only five. It was one of Scherzer's stronger seasons of his career. He was absolutely dominant on the mound. So happy he's a New York Met. I can't even believe that's real. Someone pinch me. For the 16th best player in Major League Baseball, newly acquired Texas Ranger, Marcus Simeon. Simeon slotting himself at second base, part of the brand new best middle infield in baseball in Texas. He's so good. Honestly, don't care about 2020. It was a 50 game sample where he wasn't great. The last two full seasons we played, in which he did play 162 games in both of them, he's been elite. Finished third in the MVP voting in both of them. 2019 had a WRC plus of 138, 33 homers, 92 RBIs, OPS at 892, and he did it again in 2021. 45 homers, 39 doubles, 102 RBI, stealing 15 bases, hitting 265 with a 334 on base, 538 slugging, 873 OPS. Oh yeah, and by the way, he's great in the field too. Marcus Simeon's a complete player. This is where we really start getting into the insane category. Number 16, that's a great spot for him. Getting the top 15 started at number 15, I've got New York Yankees ace Garrett Cole. Garrett Cole was still really good last year, arguably could have won the Cy Young over Robbie Ray. And despite being coined the sticky stuff merchant, he's still one of the best pitchers in the game. Last year in 30 starts, 181 innings pitched, 3.23 ERA with a FIP at 2.92, XFIP at 2.93. He was a five and a half win pitcher, striking out 33.5% of the batters he faced, walking only 5.6% for an elite K to walk ratio, a whip at 1.06. I mean, he just has some of the most electric stuff in the league from the starting pitching spot. While he did have his ebbs and flows last year, it still ended up being a really good year. He's one of the best pitchers in the league. And then speaking of one of the best pitchers in the league, let's talk about National League Cy Young Award winner in 2021, Corbin Burns, who comes in at number 14. Wow, what a year Corbin Burns had. I mean, he was 28 starts, 167 innings last year, a 2.43 ERA with a FIP at 1.63, XFIP at 2.30, and he was a seven and a half win player. 35% K rate last year, 5.2% walk rate for a K to walk ratio of 30.4%, whip under one at 0.94. He gave up little to no home runs last year, only seven in 167 innings. He was dominant. He was a beast. Second best pitcher in baseball, number 14 player in the entire league. Dropping quite a bit of my rankings, but still elite. Mookie Betts coming in at number 13. Now I know he was dealing with some injuries last year, so that definitely affected his defensive play. And it's not really that he's fallen off. I just think that there are guys that are pushing past him right now. He still does so much stuff so well. At the plate last year, still great. Coming off the really strong 2020 season, he hit 23 homers, 29 doubles, 58 RBIs with 10 stolen bases, hitting 264 with a 367 on base, 487 slugging, 854 OPS. Good for a WRC plus of 131. I think that 130 WRC plus is more realistic for where Mookie will remain as an offensive player as opposed to the 147 in 2020. But the defense, the glove, the arm, the speed, the bat, overall, he's a complete package. You can make an argument for top 10, no doubt. I just have him at number 13 right now. Coming in at the number 12 spot, I almost said Atlanta Braves first baseman. Current free agent, can't believe it. Freddie Freeman. Yeah, Freddie Freeman, this dude mashes at the plate. Again, similar to Mookie, he's not gonna have the same numbers that he did in 2020 where he was just off the charts. But you gotta say these numbers are still pretty sick. Last year in 159 games, Freeman had 31 homers, 25 doubles, two triples and 83 RBIs. Even stole eight bases, hitting 300 with a 393 on base, 503 slugging, 8 
896 OPS, good for a WRC plus at 135. And if you take the last two years, I mean, he just beats Mookie Betts in all the categories outside of defense, but of course, first base, no one really cares. Offensively, he's elite, 149 WRC plus over the last two years. And if we really want to get crazy, he's had a 144 WRC plus since 2013. Freddie Freeman is just uh, about as good as it gets. Just missing it on the top 10, coming in at number 11, Vlad Guerrero Jr. of the Toronto Blue Jays. And you can definitely make an argument he's top 10. Just keeping him outside there just a little bit, ever so slightly. Offensively, no doubt he's a top five player in the game. But of course, you need to have both sides of the baseball. And defensively, at first base, he definitely doesn't have it. But still, at the plate, that's how good he is, is that he can be a top 10 player still, being essentially one-sided. Last year, Vlad Jr., what a historic season offensively. Vlad Jr. hit 48 homers, 29 doubles, and a triple with 111 RBIs, hitting 311 with a 401 on base, 601 slugging, and 1,002 OPS. Like I said, second in the MVP voting. And this is for a guy who's still hitting the ball on the ground like way too much. Lifts the ball more, he's going to get even better. This offensive production, honestly, pretty possible out of Vlad Jr. again next year. He is just going to be one of the best offensive players in the league for years and years to come. Getting the top 10 started at the number 10 spot, Aaron Judge of the New York Yankees. My knock on him had always been he's not healthy and you're injury prone until you're not. Well, Aaron Judge was not injury prone last year. 148 games. I got to throw him in this top 10 because he is a top 10 player in the league, especially when healthy. Of course, defensively, Judge is fantastic out there. I mean, has a cannon of an arm, gets to everything and it's shocking with his size. And at the plate last year, he was really good. 39 homers, 24 doubles, 98 RBIs, hitting 287 with a 373 on base, 544 slugging, 916 OPS. Big jump up in Judge's game last year. Had a career low K rate, 25%. That's really doable with his 11.8 walk rate, 148 WRC plus. Judge is just like really good and uh, he's going into a contract year. Possible big things coming for Aaron Judge. And then ever so slightly ahead of Aaron Judge, I have reigning National League MVP, ninth best player in the league, Bryce Harper of the Philadelphia Phillies. Yeah, you want to talk about like elite hitting, Bryce Harper is also up there and he's done it before and he will do it again. Last year in 141 games, I mean, Bryce Harper had just a silly year at the plate. 35 homers, 42 doubles and a triple with 84 RBI, stealing 13 bases, hitting 309 with a 429 on base, 615 slugging and 1044 OPS. Good for a WRC plus of 170 and x at 430. He was a six and a half win player. His walk rate was almost 17%, which is just elite, elite levels. His command of the strike zone, plus his athletic ability, plus the pop in his bat. He's a top 10 player, no doubt. The days of Bryce Harper being overrated are truly dead in the water. And then coming in at number eight, just ever so slightly ahead of Bryce Harper, I've got Jose Ramirez. Now, while he might not have these incredibly high peaks like Bryce Harper, as an overall player, I like Jose Ramirez's game just a little bit more because last year with the glove, Ramirez was great. And huge development for his game. In 152 games, Ramirez had 36 homers, 32 doubles, five triples, and 103 RBIs, stealing 27 bags. That's gross. 266 average, 355 on base, 538 slugging, 893 OPS. Good to finish him sixth in the MVP voting the American League. The year before, he was great with a 993 OPS. Go all the way back to 2017. He's just one of the better hitters in the league. And being able to improve on that defense and being a great base runner, he's a total package. Jose Ramirez, top 10, no doubt. Let's throw some respect on Jose Ramirez of the Cleveland Guardians. For the seventh best player in Major League Baseball, let's head back out to LA. Trade deadline acquisition, Trey Turner. Trey Turner is just so good. And we've seen him really tap into his potential the last two seasons. Had the crazy year in 2020 where he was just one of the best players in the league. And he did it again in 2021. Turner last year in 148 games, hit 28 homers, 34 doubles, three triples, and 77 RBIs with the National League best 32 stolen bases. Led the league in hits an average at 328 and 195. 375 on base, 536 slugging, 911 OPS. Gave him a WRC plus of 142. He also is pretty decent over there at shortstop. I mean, you're talking about a guy who's been elite, is going to continue to be elite, and makes a massive impact on the field when he's out there. Trey Turner, to me, is so close to top five, but we really start getting into some crazy numbers here. For the sixth best player in baseball, the highest ranked pitcher in today's video, coming in at number six, just outside the top five, Jacob deGrom of the New York Mets. DeGrom, back-to-back Cy Young Award winner in 18 and 19, could have won it in 2020, and if he was fully healthy in 2021, it was his to take. His numbers are just um, not real. That's how they feel. Last year, 92 innings, a 1.08 ERA, a FIP at 1.24, XFIP at 1.61, and only in 92 innings, he was still a five-win pitcher. He had a K rate last year of 45.1%. Yes, you're hearing that correctly. He almost struck out half the batters he faced last season and walked only 3% of them for a K to walk ratio of 41.7%. Like you just don't see that anywhere, especially not for a starting pitcher. Has probably the best fastball in baseball, the best slider. He is the best pitcher and his value, even if it is short, is elite levels. Jacob deGrom just outside the top five. Getting the top five started at the number five spot, Atlanta Braves outfielder Ronald Acuna Jr. Now, of course, coming off an ACL tear is always going to be scary, but Ronald Acuna has been looking plenty healthy this offseason and I expect him to come back like the beast he's been, well, ever since he's been called up. Last year, only played in 82 games and the year before 46. So let's put them together. Just listen to these numbers real quick. 
because they are silly. In 128 games, Ronald Acuna hit 38 homers, 30 doubles, a triple and 81 RBI steal and 25 bases, hitting 271 with a 399 on base, 591 slugging, 989 OPS, a WRC plus at 157, six and a half win player during that time. The thing that gets slept on about Ronald Acuna is that his plate discipline has gone to new heights in the last two seasons, a 15.5% walk rate. That with the power and his speed and his glove in the outfield, top five player in the league. Like it's actually just not even a debate. And then ever so slightly getting ahead of Ronald Acuna at number four, Fernando Tatis Jr., shortstop for the San Diego Padres. Now, of course you have the shoulder injury to worry about with him, but uh, yeah, he's still really good. Literally since he's come up, all he's done has been one of the best players in the league. He has a 153 WRC plus in the 273 games he's played. That's a slash line of 292, 369, 596, and 965. Last year, he hit 42 home runs, 31 doubles, 97 RBI, stealing 25 bags, hitting 282 with a 364 on base, 611 slugging, 975 OPS, the best season of his career. Finished third in the MVP voting. While his glove has been a little bit shaky, not actually his glove, it's his arm. Because with the glove, he makes all the plays. Fernando Tatis Jr. is uh, so good and he's only 23. Next up for the third best player in Major League Baseball, we gotta talk about Shohei Otani. And I'm sure the Otani haters are gonna tell me it's one year, he's not gonna be that good forever. Shut your mouth. Enjoy Otani. He's doing historical things. While he isn't the best player on either side of the baseball, the fact that he can hit at a pretty high rate, have a five war and a 152 WRC plus from the DH position, plus be a three win player in 130 innings on the pitching side, that's unbelievable value. That's eight wins above replacement. You cannot find a player like Shohei Otani anywhere. Babe Ruth wasn't doing this kind of stuff in the same season. So let's talk about Otani. Last year, possibly one of the greatest seasons we've ever seen. On the offensive side, 46 homers, 26 doubles, eight triples and 100 RBIs, stealing 26 bases. I mean, who is this guy? 257 average, 372 on base, 592 slugging, 965 OPS for WRC plus of 152, like I mentioned. And then on the pitching side, no slouch either. 3.18 ERA, a FIP at 3.52, XFIP 3.55, a WHIP at 1.09, striking out almost 30% of the batters he faced, a career low walk rate at 8.3%. He's debatably number two, but I'll put him at number three for now because the guy at number two, well, you know him, it's Juan Soto. I mean, you want to talk about one of the best players we've ever seen at the young age of just 23? Yeah, you're talking about Juan Soto. Soto, from the moment he's come up, has commanded the strike zone like honestly no one we've ever seen at such a young age and he's really mastered it the last two seasons the shortened COVID season 47 games he had a 351 average with a 490 on base and 1185 OPS that's like actually disgusting and last year bigger sample size so the numbers are a little bit lower but still on an insane level 151 games 29 homers 20 doubles two triples and 95 RBIs walking 145 times striking out 93 a 313 average 465 on base 534 slugging and 999 OPS good for a WRC plus of 163 the last Last two years, he has a 171 WRC plus. The only guy that's really comparable is Mike Trout to him. Juan Soto is like actually just so good. I'm not going to make this argument, but you could that he's the best player in baseball. And if he does it again next year and the guy at number one takes a step back, you are looking at the best player in baseball. 21.9% walk rate to a 14% K rate. Who are you, Juan Soto? What planet did you come from? And after hearing those numbers, you know who's going to be at number one. It's Mike Trout. Now, yes, Mike Trout was injured last year, the biggest injury of his career. But I'm willing to take the risk that he's going to be healthy in 2022 and that if he is healthy, he's going to be the best player in baseball as he's been forever because that's just Mike Trout. I mean, literally Mike Trout since his rookie season has a 174 WRC plus. That spans from 2012, guys. And it's not like these numbers have been dropping. He might be getting better. The last two seasons combined, Mike Trout's played 89 games. And in those 89 games, the numbers are astonishing. 25 homers, 17 doubles, three triples, and 64 RBIs, hitting 301 with a 419 on base, 611 slugging, 1029 OPS. He is a five-win player in 89 games. That makes him basically an eight or nine win player at a minimum if he's healthy for a full season with those numbers and that pace. He walked 16% of the time, striking out 25%, WRC plus 172. While injuries are a legitimate concern, there's nobody who's going to dethrone Mike Trout just yet until we actually see him start to decline. Health is the biggest issue for him right now, but the play on the field, it's number one, no doubt. So there they are, the top 50 players in Major League Baseball ranked going into the 2022 season. I'd love to know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Give me your thoughts and opinions. Drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it. It really does help support my channel and my video, as well as subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the content moving forward. Again, big shout out to you guys, the viewers at home for supporting this crazy series I decide to do every year where I rank every position, every player for 12 days straight. Big shout out to Editor Jackson again for helping out with the insane workload that I've given him over the last few weeks. And I'm going to pat myself on the back too. We did it. 12 days in a row of rankings, finishing it with the top 50. Merry Christmas, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the rest of your night. Probably going to take a few days off here just because uh, I'm, I'm pretty exhausted. I've been staying up to like 4 a.m. every single night. But seriously, thank you guys so much for the amazing
amazing support. I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing right now. YouTube talking baseball as a job without your guys' amazing support. I'm super grateful and super lucky to be in this situation. That's where I'm wrapping up today's video. You guys know the drill from here on out. This right here is going to be the top 50 player ranking from last year if you want to watch that as well as this is going to be something YouTube recommends. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. So is Jackson. Let's cut it here, Jackson. We're out. We'll see you, I don't know, in a couple days for another video. The 12 Davis of MLB rankings is over. Bye.